So here we go. Here is our quiz. Sir Key, in which quadrant does the terminal arm of an angle measuring 890 degrees lie? I better do a sketch. Let's see. How far, Spencer? And then I told you that the trick is it's your nine times table with an extra zero. So 360, I think, 36, 45, 54, 63. Good morning. 72, 81. Now, right to here would be 900. Oh, a little bit too far. 890 right there, which was quadrant, quadrant two. Oh, I could even tell you the reference angle if they asked. The reference angle is 10 degrees. Example two, what's the smallest positive coterminal angle with negative 170. By the way, another word for smallest positive coterminal angle, Brett, is the principal angle, the angle between 0 and 360. That's our principal. It's like our lowest terms fraction. It's sort of the same idea. Um, easy way to find it is to go negative 170 plus 360. And I can probably even do that in my head. 360, uh, negative 170 plus 300 is, negative, is positive 270 plus 60 is... No, I'm botching that completely, Mr. Duick. First thing in the morning, I better go to the machine. Let's go 360 minus 170. It'd be 260 minus 70. Is it, is it 190? Woohoo! I did recover. 190 degrees. Now, it's 360 degrees if I'm dealing with degrees if I was in radians and there was no degree symbol there, I wouldn't add or subtract multiples of 360 to go once around and find coterminal angles. But what would I add or subtract instead if I was in radians? What's the same as 360 degrees? 2 pi. Speaking of which, example 3, what's the reference angle for? Okay, 320 degrees. 320 degrees is right there. Reference angle is that right there. 40 degrees. Reference angle for 7 pi by 3. Well, as soon as it's a third, I'll call this 3 pi by 3 and 6 pi by 3. Pi and 2 pi. 7 pi by 3 would be all the way to 6 and then 1 pi by 3 further, which is about that much. And I'm pretty sure my reference angle is this. My reference angle is pi by 3. Negative 7 pi by 6. Negative 7 pi by 6 means to go in this direction. Here's negative 6 pi by 6. Here's negative 12 pi by 6. Negative 9 pi by 6. Negative 3 pi by 6. Anyhow, negative 7 pi by 6. There's negative 6. I'm going to go 1 pi by 6 for effort. I'm pretty sure the reference angle is positive pi by 6. One mark each. We said reference angles are really handy for something like number four. Number four, when they're asking me to solve a trig equation where they want me to find theta, there is now two answers if they give me a domain between 0 and 360, or in radians, between 0 and 2 pi. They have asked me to solve a trig equation, so the first thing I'm going to do is a sketch. And I'm going to write the cast rule. And they've told me that sine was negative. Sine is negative here and here. I now want to find the reference angle. The reference angle is going to be the inverse sine, not of negative 0.766, just of 0.766. I never put a negative in to find a reference angle. I'm in degrees, so I better make sure my calculator is in degrees. Hey, it is. That's amazing. Must have just taught physics. Inverse sine of 0.766. And I get 49.9. I'm pretty sure Mr. Duick had 50 degrees in mind when he made up this question. That means that this angle right here and this angle right here are each 50 degrees. How big is 
Theta 1. Theta 1 is that big right there, which is going to be 180 plus 50 degrees, which is 230 degrees, yes? And Theta 2 is going to be this angle right here, which is 360 degrees, take away 50 degrees, 310 degrees. Is that correct, folks? People nodding? Okay. If you got that, you get two out of two. Otherwise, I would give you the way I would mark this. If I saw that you had the correct quadrant, that would be worth a half mark. A half mark for finding a reference angle, a half mark for the first angle, and a half mark for the second angle. And there's your two marks. Is that okay? Turn the page. It says, find the other five trig ratios. They gave me cosecant, so I guess I'm going to be looking for sine theta, cos theta, tan theta, secant theta, and cotangent theta, and you'll notice I wrote the pairs side by side, making dumb mistakes, and they told me cosecant, so I left this one blank. And they also told me what quadrant we're in, because if I use my cast rule, Alex, which trig function does cosecant go with? So sine is positive, and cotangent, which goes with what? Tangent is negative. Where is sine positive? Well, sine is positive here and here. Where is tangent negative? Tangent is negative here and here. Where is the overlap? Aha! I'm in this quadrant. I have to be. I'm in quadrant two. Which means that for what it's worth, cosine is going to be negative. So will secant. Tangent will be negative. So will cotangent. And sine will be positive. Not only that, they gave me cosecant as a fraction. Cosecant goes with, what did you say, Alex? Sine is what over what in terms of x and y and r, folks? y over r, oh, this is uh, r equals 25 and y equals 24. And I'd like to find x, which is going to be negative. Look at what quadrant I'm in, Mitsu. It has to be negative. And I know that, uh, oh, yeah, x is going to be the square root of r squared minus y squared. It's going to be the square root of, uh, Mr. Dirk, you put a 25 there. How about putting a 24 there? That would have been a little silly. 25 squared minus 24 squared. 25 squared minus 24 squared equal. How about 25 squared minus 24 squared equals. Hey, do you get uh, x equals negative 7? And now it's fill in the blanks. Sine is y over r. Cosine is x over r. Secant is r over x. Tangent is y over x. And cotangent is x over y. The way I would mark this, there's five trig ratios. I take a half mark off for each one that was wrong. So if you get four of those wrong, you get zero. Sorry. Now, number five is exactly the same as number six. Really? Yeah. Six and five are the same question. Except in number five, I gave you the R and the Y as a fraction. Here, I gave you the X and the Y as a point. So I know that x is negative 3, y is negative 4. Will I need r? I don't know. But oh yeah, they want cosecant. Cosecant beta is, uh, cosecant goes with sine. Cosecant is r over y. It's going to be something, well, it's going to be negative. There's going to be a 4 on the bottom. I also know that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. Or if I want to, Spencer, I can get rid of the squared on the r by cluing in that it's going to be the square root of that. Uh, do you end up with r being 5? I think it's the 3, 4, 5 triangle. That one I kind of got memorized. And I think you end up with uh, that. Yes? Negative 5 over 4? 
So I will say this, as far as I'm concerned, Brett, I can give you either any trig ratio or any point, and I can ask you to find any of the six other trig ratios. Great multiple choice question. By the way, in exact form means leave it as a fraction, not as a decimal. Exact value means leave it as a fraction. And if there have been square roots in here, leave them as square roots. Yo. Four is not positive. It's negative. Right there. The five is positive. But we don't put it. You, if you put the negative on the bottom, it's not wrong. It's just bad math matters. Just like walking around something hanging from your nose is not wrong. But if you want to have friends, you really want to deal with it. Uh, I'll look for a negative in a fraction on the top or in the front. If you stick it in the bottom, odds are I'll miss it. And if I do see it, I'll go, oh, this person has bad math manners. And I'll think bad thoughts about you. Again. Number seven, calculator work. Evaluate the following to three decimal places. I'm in degrees. I better make sure I'm in degrees. Yeah, I am. How do I find cosecant? Well, that's going to be one... Let's try that again, Mr. Duke. 1 divided by the sine of 84. It's not the reciprocal of the 84. Most common mistake, by the way, that's your answer. The most common mistake I see Tyler's kids do this. Oh, that's the sine of 1 over 84. You're not flipping the angle, you're flipping the trig function. So it's not that. It's... Uh, 1.006. B. Oh, radians. It's going to be 1 divided by the sine of 2 pi by 3, close, bra close bracket, plus secant goes with cosine. 1 divided by the cosine of 4 pi by 3. I just typed it all in in one line. I think you get negative 0.845. Yeah, am I wrong? 4 pi by 5, Mr. Duick. You don't get negative. Uh, as I was saying, <clears throat> you get negative 0 0.081. Yes. One mark for each of those. Now, I told you this first trig test is going to be non-calc which means these two questions would not be on your first trig test. They will be on your second trig test. Wait a minute, Mr. Duck. How can we do questions like this without a calculator? There is a way to find a reference angle. If you know a uh, trig decimal, to find certain reference angles, we'll memorize certain ones. That's going to be in the next couple of days, actually. Anyways, can you give yourself a score out of count them 12, please? Making sure your name is on it and passing them forwards, please. Can you all open your books to the homework from last day, please? Which was... Oh, let's put a little answers here, by the way. Which was an introduction to radians. We didn't do a lesson last class because of the pep rally and the shortened classes. I said it was your time to get totally caught up, and I hope you did. Because... For today and next class, it's going to be applications of radians like crazy. And if you don't understand radians, you're not going to have much success in getting the applications. So I'll begin. Any questions from the homework anywhere? This is your chance to throw them at me, at least metaphorically, not physically. Yes. 7C, love to. Okay. Okay. Draw the angle in standard uh, negative 2 pi by 3. This one? Draw the angle in standard position. First of all, negative means I'm going to go that way, and I'm going to call this negative 3 pi by 3. Negative 2 pi by 3. If this is if, if 3 thirds is half a circle, I think 2 thirds, it's about there. I'm kind of in my mind dividing that bottom half of the circle into three equal chunks. Right? There's 1 third right there. 2 thirds, 3 thirds, roughly. Uh, the reference angle is that right there. Oh, they didn't ask for the reference angle, but I would. Uh, pi by 3. The principal angle. Now, the principal angle is going to go this way. This is the positive angle. 
So first question, if I went to here, how far am I? I think I'm 3 pi by 3 and 1 pi by 3 further. I think the principal angle is 4 pi by 3s. It's 1 pi by 3 past pi by 3 pi by 3s. One positive and one negative coterminal angle? Okay. If I add 2 pi, except I'm not going to add 2 pi. I'm going to add 6 pi by 3, which is 2 pi, but why not go to a common denominator right away? I think 1 uh, would be 10 pi by 3. And if they want me to go negative, I'll start with the one that they gave me, negative 2 pi by 3, and I'll subtract 2 pi, which is 6 pi by 3. Uh, negative 2, take away 6 more. Uh, negative 8 pi by 3. This, 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 and this. All the same angle in that, uh, sorry, all the same terminal arm. You'll end up in the same spot. I can keep going ad nauseum as long as you want me to. Okay. That common denominator trick is a good one. Use it. As soon as they give you, whatever denominator they give you, start doing your, labeling your quadrants in those Sixths is easier. See, thirds is a bit trickier because this is a kind of a half and a half of a third. It, it doesn't work out evenly, but you can kind of imagine this divided into three chunks and the top divided into three chunks. That's how you get six chunks of pi by threes. Is that all right? Next. So we understand we're good on radians. If not, I'm around today after school. I can help you one on one. You do not. You do not, you do not want to try and put this one off and think, oh, I'll catch it later. Not a, tr please trust me, not, not your best decision. Let us please then go to lesson five, applications of radians, page 258. And the first application of radians is now I'm going to ask you to solve trig equations in radians not in degrees. Okay. So it says, example one, find each value of theta. And then it says this, now I gotta be a little bit fussy. This says between zero and two pi, that's the same as between zero and 360. The only thing, Brett, I don't like is for some reason in this book, they go from touching zero to touching zero again on a test I will almost always not put an or equal to right there because I would rather have you go all the way around and stop, not all the way around and then get back to where you started from and so you're repeating one single angle. I don't like the fact that they're repeating zero degrees. So if you ever, it's going to be important if you're going to answer that's exactly zero or 360, but I won't be too fussy on whether you give me both or not. I just don't like that. You awake? Good job. By the way, congratulations, senior boys won the air show on the weekend, played quite splendidly. Mitsu gave some six foot three kid nightmare for the rest of his life when he blocked his shot on a breakaway in front of the whole school. Y you know he's going to be in therapy some. And, and this was this short look. I, I thought I could jump higher than him. And, and, anyways, okay. Number one sine theta equals a half. You know what I'm going to do first to solve this, to find both angles? physics 12 kids, I'm going to say, what does that mean? I'm going to sketch, draw a picture. So I'll do that over here. Write my cast rule. Emily, which trig function did they give me? Did they tell me sine was negative or positive? Which means I'm uh, here and here. Yes? Now I need to find the reference angle. The reference angle is going to be the inverse sine of, uh, I'll write 0.5 instead of a half because it's easier to type, one half. I could just see I lost a few of you, fine. Reference angle of one half. All of you right now, put your calculators in radians if you haven't already. We did degrees on the quiz, yes? I think that'll be the last you see of degrees for the rest of this unit unless I ask you to convert from degrees to radians, right? But otherwise, but your calculator work is going to be in radians. So I'm going to go second function sine of one half. 
and I get 0.5236. Now that means that this angle and this angle are each 0.5236. And this is where I said the only disadvantage with radians is doing the arithmetic in your head is a bit trickier. Everything else, radians, far surpasses degrees. And so we talked about leaving degrees behind, not responding to the emails, not looking up the texts, not answering the phone, okay? Don't open that package of chocolates that's sitting on your back porch. It's done. It's over. How big is this first angle? Okay, the first angle is 0.5236. How can I calculate how big this second angle is? Not 180. Oh, you called them back, Brett. How could you do that? He's not worth it. I'm telling you. Oh, but he was so nice for all those years. I'm telling you, you've upgraded. It's not 180. What is this, really? Not 180. What is it? Okay. Let's remind ourselves. It's pi. So it's not going to be 180 minus. It's going to be pi minus 0.5236, which is what? You got the pi button on your calculator. This is why I said... Brett, doing these in your head, a little bit trickier, but whatever, what is 3.14? I use the pi button. Pi minus 0.5236. Or you could even go pi minus answer button, which would be really clever. Kara, what'd you get? To four decimal places, I heard two points, sorry? Round it off properly? 6089 or 6090? 2.6090? Yes? No? People are shaking their heads. Pi minus that. Right? Uh, 2.6179999. Use your pi button. Don't use 3.14. Uh, 2.6180. Yes? 't Eric how do I solve secant it's a trick question I don't secant goes with which trig function Eric come see me after school seriously okay I gotta grill you then secant goes with which trig function Justin sign cosine 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 so I'm gonna flip both sides I can turn this into a cosine but I have to flip this side by putting it underneath the one. And you'll notice Alex, I put the fraction in the front, not on the bottom, because I have good math manners. I'm a classy mathy. Now what? Sketch. This would be in a which trig function did they give me? Cosine, see, technically, yeah. Not actually, see, it was cosine. Uh, did they tell me the answer was negative or positive? Uh, was cosine uh, here and here? Yes, 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 yes. Now let's find the reference angle. The reference angle is going to be the inverse cos of 1 over root 2. Not negative root 2, just I, I used the negative already. I can type that into my calculator as is. Second function cosine of 1 over root 2. I get 0 0.7854. 0.7854, which means that that angle and that angle are each 0.7854 radians. There's theta 1. 
How can I figure out how big theta 1 is? Not 180 minus, but what, Brett? It's going to be pi minus 0.7854. I get 2.3562. Here's theta 2. How can I figure out how big theta 2 is? I heard it. Pi plus. Fact. Second function, enter, change the minus to a plus. Woohoo! 3.26, no, 3.9270. Units? There are none. Radians, we don't write units. If there's no units, it's in radians. Yo! We always use inverse to find a reference angle, right? We know the actual value that, they, that the trig function worked out to. Apparently, it worked out to exactly root 2, which is 1.4, negative root 2, which is negative 1.4, one something. Anyways, that's the number that it worked out to. Now, you're going to find, starting Wednesday, that this number is not a coincidence. Uh, there's a, certain angles, nice angles, and their trig functions are all roots, and we're going to memorize some of them. Okay. C. What kind of an equation is C? It's a quadratic trig. How do I know? It's got a squared and a trig. It's going to be four answers. First thing I need to do is get rid of the squared. Now, how do I get rid of a squared? I'm going to square root both sides. I'm going to start writing up here because we're going to need some room. I'm going to rewrite this as tan theta equals the square root of 3. Oh, but when I square root both, both sides, I better remember plus or minus. I'm going to do my sketch. Isabel, which trig function did they give me? Tangent. Was my answer negative or positive? Turns out, Isabel, both. Tangent was positive, which is there and there, but tangent was also negative, because it's plus or minus, which was there or there. And that's why I'm going to get four answers. It's a kind of like a quadratic quadratic. Let's find the reference angle. The reference angle, Brett, is going to be the inverse tan of root 3. The reference angle is going to be the inverse 10 of the square root of 3. Whatever the heck that is, it's a decimal, I don't care. Uh, 1.0472 Now what that means is that this angle, this angle, this angle, and this angle are all 1.0472 radians. There's theta 1. How big? Well, yeah, 1.0472. How can I figure out how big theta 2 is? Spencer, I just heard you type it. Pi minus 1.0472, which is two point zero nine four four.
theta 3 is going to be that big, which I think is going to be pi plus 1 1.0472. 4.1888. Yeah. Um, there's the last angle. How can I figure out how big that guy is? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we can, a, a, any quadrant, Ryan, we're fine. It's either going to be pi plus, pi minus, or 2 pi minus. Or if you're in quadrant 1, that's the easy one. The reference angle is the answer. Uh, theta 4 is going to be 2 pi minus 1.0472. Now, in your homework, Ryan, if you don't write this step out, if you go straight to your calculator and just write the answer, I'm good with that. In our notes, I'm doing that so that when you're studying, you know what the heck we've done, just in case you forget, right? 2 pi minus 1.0472. Oh. Radians. Okay. Sometimes, just for giggles, we can change the domain. We're going to change example 2a just a little bit. It says sine x equals that. But I want to change the domain. I'm going to change the domain to, uh, let's see, 0 to pi by 2. Zero to pi by two. Instead of between 0 and 2 pi, which means we're going all the way around the circle, they're saying, find any answers between here and here. Okay. Well, we're going to start the same way. Trevor, which trig function did they give us? Positive or negative? Here and here. Oh, oh, but wait. Look at the domain restriction. They said we want the answer between 0 and pi by 2. What angle is right here in radians? Pi. So what angle is right here in radians? Half as far or pi by 2. You know what? They don't want us to use that. They only want us to find this one. Okay. I'll humor them. I'm still going to find the reference angle which is the inverse sine of 0.425. However, the reference angle is also my answer because I'm in quadrant one. So what is the inverse sine of 0.425? Mitsu, what'd you get? Point four, is that right, 0 0.4390? No, yes? I'm not getting any nods. Oh, yes? 0.4390 units radians you can write rad if you want to if you have the inner surfer but meanwhile I just blank is no units is radians this is what we would do Kara if because there's two answers for almost all of these if we wanted specifically to force you to give us one of the if we were interested in one of the answers we can just restrict the domain like uh, ooh, in B here they want us to go between 0 and 2 pi here they want the top half of the circle answer that's between 0 and 2 pi. Let's try. B. Uh, still going to start up by doing a sketch. But the domain that they gave us here, Eric, they want the answer x to be between 0 and pi. That means they're saying, you know what, ignore the bottom. Just use the top half of the circle. Okay. Dominique, which trig function did they give me? Tangent is negative, 
in which of those two quadrants? Because it is negative, yes? Yeah. And now it's going to be the same old, same old, but we're only going to end up finding one. So reference angle. is going to be the, whoop, change colors for some strange reason, Mr. Biff, that was silly. It's going to be the inverse tan of 4 over 5. The reference angle ends up being inverse tan of 4 over 5.6747. Theta 1 is going to be, how could I find Theta 1? Pi minus? Yeah, I'm going to go straight to my calculator. Pi minus, and I'll even use my answer button since it's there, uh, 2.4669. Oh, they said to the nearest hundredth, didn't they? Why don't I follow their instructions? Well, whatever. 2.47, I guess, if I follow the instructions in the nearest hundredth. And I guess this should be 0.44. Put to self. Read. Okay. Example three. Find the value of cosecant. Eric, cosecant goes with which trig function? No, those the the, the can'ts can't. Hey, 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 hey. Here's this. The can'ts can't go together. Eh? Huh? Eh? Huh? Oh, come on, that's pretty good. So cosecant can't, can't go with secant. What does cosecant can't go with? It's a sine. So they want me to find cosecant if tangent is that. Ooh, and we're in that quadrant there. And we're between, okay. Let's do a little sketch. This is pi. This is 2 pi. This is pi by 2. This is 3 pi by 2. Asar, what's the domain restriction they gave me? Can you read it out? We're between what? Look. Ah, oh, no! Not 180. We're not, we're not, we're not calling him again. Leave him. Asar, I'm telling you, you can do better. I know you can. It's not worth going back to. Just read it to me. Between what? And? Uh, you know what? I think they're saying we're in there. C A S T. Tyler, which trig function do they want me to find? Will cosecant be negative or positive in this quadrant here? Understand, and you said negative, yes? If this is multiple choice, how much you want to bet you could cross out half the wrong answers? In fact, I'll, I'll tell you. Half will be positive and half will be negative, because when I make these up, that's one of the things I'll do. Cosecant is what over what in terms of x and y and r? And what did they give me? They gave me tangent. Tangent is what over what in terms of x and y and r. So according to this, the y value is 1 and the x value is root 3. Everybody see how come we're wrong we are? That the y value is not 1. The x value is not root 3. You see it? Look what quadrant they told us we're in. Can y possibly be positive in that quadrant? Can x possibly be positive? Now, tangent was positive because actually it was a negative here and a negative here. And Alex, when you have two negatives in a fraction, what can't? Yeah, you know what? It's that and it's that. Which, by the way, is where this is going to be get its negative from. It's going to get it from the negative y. We need to find r. R is going to be the square root of 
x squared plus y squared. Sandoli, what's a negative squared? What's root 3 squared? Just plain old 3 plus what's negative 1 squared? In fact, you get the square root of 3 plus 1. What is 3 plus 1? Square root. Plus or minus? No, no. Radius is always positive. You know what? You get that. Although, would I put the answer over 1 if I gave this to you? No. Now, I have this question. I like this question. In fact, I'll even tell you what the answers would be. This would be a multiple choice question on your test. The answers would be positive 2, negative 2, positive 1 half, and negative 1 half. Because I would assume some people would get cosecant and forget to do the reciprocal. So you even know the answers ahead of time. Okay, so there's some applications of radians. One more and we're done. Turn the page. The arc length formula. The arc length formula. In the last lesson, we defined radians, the angle. We said it was the arc length divided by the radius. Theta was A over R. Physics 12's get the A by itself. How would you get the A by itself? What would you do with this R times it to the other side? In fact, this is the arc length formula, and you need to know it. Now, I'm going to say you need to memorize it, but I'd like to show you the easy way to memorize it. I've never seen this in a textbook. This is Mr. Duick's invention, and he's proud of this. So look up. This is the arc length formula. Brett, the what length formula? Doesn't it sort of look like the word arc? The arc length formula, it's the word arc, sort of. Not quite, but that, that's how I've always remembered it. Whenever when someone says arc length, I go, oh, A equals R oh, theta. I got to turn the C into it, theta. This is the arc length formula, and you can use this to find an arc length. Oh, but here is the key. Theta has to be in radians. Asar, what does theta have to be in? No more degrees. That means if they give me an angle in degrees, I'm going to have to convert it into radians. And r is the length of the radius. Here are some questions we can quickly do. A pendulum 30 centimeters long swings, swings through an arc of 45 centimeters. Through what angle does the pendulum swing? Answer in degrees and in radians to the nearest tenth. We'll do this in radians, and then we'll convert our answer to degrees. Do they mention the word arc? Yes. Do they mention an angle? Yes. You know what? I'm pretty sure this is a job for the arc length equation. But what do they ask me to find in this question, Dominique? Let's get theta by itself. How would I get theta by itself? Theta is going to be A over R. What's the arc length mentioned in this question? Read. Yeah. 45. What's R? I guess it's the length of the pendulum. By the way, for those of you who are going, what's a pendulum? A pendulum is something that swings either on a string or this could be a piece of wood like in a grandfather clock. The grandfather clocks have a pendulum that ticks back and forth. It can be solid. Anyways, can you see the bottom is tracing out a circle, an arc? Which means I'm pretty sure the pendulum length is the radius, yes? The angle is 1.5 radians. That's part of the answer. They also wanted this in degrees. OK. 1.5 times. How will I change this to degrees? Oh, I want degrees on top, and I want the radians to cancel. So the pi goes on the bottom, degrees goes on the top. 1.5 radians is going to be 1.5 times 180 divided by pi, divided by pi. 
and I get 85.9 degrees. Almost a 90 degree angle, but not quite. Okay. Example 5. A circle of radius 3 centimeters contains a central angle of 2.4 radians. Calculate the length of the arc. New word subtended by, traced out by. The central angle to the nearest tenth of the centimeter. Oh, what are they asking me to find in this question here? The arc length. This looks like a job for the arc length equation, which strangely enough looks an awful lot like the word arc. And they're asking me to find the arc length. Which of those variables stands for the arc length, Ellen? Is it by itself or right? Oh, great. This is, oh, double check. Our angle, is it in radians? Then it's straight plug and chug. 3 times 2.4. Heck, I can do that in my head. I think 7.2? <coughs> the arc length will be 7.2 centimeters. Number six it says calculate the arc length. Oh, okay. A equals R theta. Oh, they didn't give me the radius. What did they give me instead? Careful. Oh, the diameter. If the diameter is 9.2, what's the radius? You know what? I'm going to be really lazy. I'm going to go like this. 9.2 over 2. I'll just, because I'm going to have to type that into my calculator no matter what. Why not do it in one step? There's my radius. Oh! Joel, they gave me the angle, but is this angle in radians? No. 150 degrees times pi over 180 degrees. Will the degrees is cancel? Will I be left with radians? You know what? I think I can go all on my calculator. Multiply the top, divide by the bottom. It's going to be 9.2 times 150 times pi divided by, oh, I got two numbers on the bottom. Now you got a couple of options. Kara, you might be clever enough to say, hey, 2 times 180 is 360, which it is. You can just divide by 360, or bracket 2 times 180. And I get an arc length of 12, a point to the nearest tenth, 12.0 uh, meters. So, Brianna, I'm going to ask you an arc length question. Brianna, um, I'm either going to ask you to find the arc length or the radius or the angle. I figure all three of those are fine. I'll give you the other two. Okay. Oh, one more. A circle with center C and minor arc AB measuring 15.2 centimeters is shown. If angle A equals angle B, A, blah, blah, blah. okay, they want me to find the radius. I can do this for Spencer. Get the R by itself. What am I? What's it going to be? R equals R equals like you said, A over theta, right? Did they give me the arc length? Yep. Now, here, they told me that this angle is pi by 6, and this angle is pi by 6. Well, that's not the angle that I want. I want that angle. If this was in Asar, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to bring him up again. I know it's an emotional attachment. Degrees, don't, I, I don't know. What does every triangle add to in degrees? 180. So what does every triangle add to radians? Pi. Or, what's my denominator right now here, Emily? Okay, a triangle equals that much. Right? That, is that still pi? Yes, yes, yes. I have 1 pi by 6, 1 pi by 6. It has to add to 6 pi by 6. How big does that angle right there have to be? 
which is 2 pi by 3 in lowest terms, I don't care. I'm going to be going to my calculator anyways. I better put that bottom fraction in brackets on my calculator. Fifteen point two divided by bracket four pi by six, and I get seven point three uh, centimeters. Okay. Some applications of radians. Solving trig equations using radians and the arc length equation. Now, pause here for a second. In your homework, I'm going to be giving you some questions, like example one, where you're going to be asked to find an answer. The problem is, when you look in the back of the book, his answers aren't going to be decimals. They're going to be exact values in terms of pi. I'll just show you, for example. So here's the answers. And he's going to be saying the answer is pi by 6 and 5 pi by 6. There is a way to do these in your head, getting exact values. That's next lesson. What happened when they first published this book, these two lessons were swapped. And so you already knew how to do this. So when you solve number 1, you're going to get that answer. If you take this answer in the back and just type it into your calculator, pi divided by 6, you can see if you're right. Okay. When you solve number 1, you're also going to get, oops, not by 9, that answer. When you look in the back, just change that to a decimal to see if you're right. Does that make sense? And then on Wednesday, you'll learn how you can actually get these in particular, all of number one and all of number three, you won't get exact values. You'll get decimal answers. Just change the answers in the back to decimals and see if you're right. What is your homework? Number one. Number two, number three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. So far, I've assigned one to eight. Nine. Uh, yeah. Skip ten. Eleven. Twelve. Okay, now let's go back because that's too much, Mr. Duke. Let me see here. Number one, skip B. Skip E. Number two. Skip A and D. Three, skip D. There, that's a little better. 